Okay, so now we're going to look at, in our last and final video on respiration, we're going to look at anaerobic respiration or what happens when there is no oxygen available. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and see. So at the end of glycolysis, so I want to point out in fermentation or anaerobic respiration, we do not use the mitochondria. This is all occurring within the uh, cytoplasm of a cell and does not require oxygen. So all of the ATP produced during anaerobic respiration are these two um, ATP that you see here that were made by substrate level phosphorylation. So what follows glycolysis in anaerobic conditions is really just to regenerate that NAD plus. Because if we remember this step of glycolysis um, where we needed NAD plus in order to attach that phosphate, uh, inorganic phosphate to the substrate, if you don't have NAD plus, well then this step stops. And if this step stops, well then you don't have the, um, then, sorry, hold on. Oh, well, there it is. So then these two phosphates would not be attached and you'd only have these two which are just the two that we started with, right? When it, in that first endergonic step. So then you'd have zero net gain ATP. So those NAD pluses, those um, electron carriers are super important in glycolysis. So if we only have glycolysis, well, I'm sorry, let's backtrack. If there's aerobic respiration, these electron carriers will be oxidized at the electron transport chain back into NAD plus, and all is good. However, if we don't have aerobic respiration and we're not oxidizing them at the electron transport chain, well then what do we do, right? That's where fermentation comes into play. So in fermentation, um, one of the reactions that could occur is that we are also not using pyruvate in glycolysis, it's just one of the products made. So um, pyruvate's only going to be used if it's aerobic respiration, where it'll be oxidized in the mitochondria. So um, here, during this reaction, we're going to oxidize the electron carrier. And in that reaction, pyruvate, um, like the chemical reaction that occurs is pyruvate is converted into lactic acid. And so here, though, the main product of this is the NAD plus so that it can continue glycolysis within that cell. So lactic acid is a waste product that occurs. Um, this is going to happen in like the muscle cells of animals, for example. Now, so while NAD plus is the main reason for lactic acid fermentation, we still produce lactic acid. And if you're an athlete who's worked out like in a sprint workout or something, and you've had sore muscles, you've experienced that lactic acid from working out anaerobically. Now, you may be thinking, what about that potential energy? There's still three carbons, right? We only got two ATP in glycolysis from one glucose. That's like hardly anything compared, sorry, my dog, compared to aerobic respiration and the electron transport chain where we got over 30 ATP uh, from it. So this lactic acid is not wasted. Actually, your liver, like as when your muscle cells stop being sore after a workout, it's because your blood has carried the lactic acid away from your cells to your liver, where your liver will convert it back into pyruvate. So we didn't actually waste that potential energy from that sugar molecule. It was just a temporary thing. Now, the other type of fermentation though, so this is lactic acid fermentation. The other type of fermentation is um, alcoholic fermentation, where during the reaction to oxidize your electron carrier back to NAD+, so fermentation or glycolysis can continue, um, that chemical reaction results in pyruvate forming ethanol and carbon dioxide. So this is um, how like alcohol is made. So um, like beer or something, like when we talk about um, like brewer's yeast, yeast is a single-celled organism that does alcoholic fermentation. So with um, brewer's yeast, it would actually uh, create alcohol and carbon dioxide. Now, um, baking yeast, 
is going to um, also do this process, create uh, carbon dioxide in the process, which if you've ever baked bread from scratch and you put yeast into the mix, um, it'll actually set it into a warm place and you allow the bread to rise. When the bread is rising, it's due to the carbon dioxide being created, so the gas is causing it to rise. Um, but you don't get drunk from eating bread because when you bake the bread or you bake the dough, that alcohol evaporates. Um, and then if you ever slice open like French bread or something, those air pockets, those like holes in your bread are from pockets of carbon dioxide from this uh, alcoholic fermentation. Um, this is also how wine is made. And so uh, you add yeast to like grape juice basically and let it ferment. Um, eventually though, the alcohol concentration gets high enough, 10, 11%, and that will actually kill the um, little single celled organisms and stop the production of uh, more, more alcohol. Okay, so uh, in alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation, they are both anaerobic and they're both serving the purpose to recycle or regenerate that NAD plus so glycolysis can continue. Because without oxygen, those two ATP, that's the only energy you get from, um, from this process, from anaerobic, uh, anaerobic respiration. It's only those two from glycolysis, and so uh, that cell needs at least those two, so it needs to keep that NAD plus uh, going. All right, so good job. So there's our overview of anaerobic, anaerobic respiration. One thing, as I was just talking, I want to point out, no ATP is made here. Uh, the oxygen of pyruvate is just like a little step before the citric acid cycle, and there's no ATP made in step two. So uh, sometimes kids write that to me, and I just want to make sure that we uh, that I mention it. Okay, good job.